Amen. I want something that's going to help you get through this week. And help you get through today. And help you get on down the road. I, I, I don't want you to go to church all your life. And I, you know, I've been pastor here for two and a half years or almost something like that. Close or whatever. And I don't want you to come here for two years and, and, uh, and not get down the road a little ways further. I want you to go down the road. I want you to come on and uh, I don't want you to stay in 1985, nor do I want you to go ahead to 2027. I want you to stay where you're at and go forward. Amen? Amen. Amen. You know, you keep, we always have to talk about the sweet by and by Jesus. Yeah. Someday, Jesus. Yeah. Maybe we, whenever I hear come, one day, we talk about the birth and resurrection and all that stuff, about the past Jesus. But what about the Jesus for today? Amen. Amen. I want you to have enough Jesus to, for today. What is it that Paul was writing? It said, or was it, was it Jesus said that evil uh, uh, has enough for, for today and uh, there's enough grace for today. And, and it, 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 I, I don't remember who said it, Jesus or Paul. And that said, uh, but I wasn't planning on using that scripture, so I didn't look at it. <laughs> so, but uh, I can't remember who said there's enough, grace is sufficient for today. And, and, and that evil will take care of itself for today. And so I, I would talk to you for just a little bit about Jesus being first. I know I'm an easygoing guy. I know that. I, I'm, I'm, I'm working on me. And I know I'm very easygoing. And, I, I, and people sometimes take advantage of that because I am very easygoing. And that, there's not a whole lot, unless it's something that's pressing right then, I don't. My color messed up. My jacket. What's going on? Y'all, dog, give me signals here. <laughs> Well, I was like, call, I'm like, hey, I, so, so, and so, uh, anyway, and so, and, and unless it's something that's pressing and something that is, uh, something that is, uh, right now, I don't, I normally just say, well, yeah, it's not that big a deal, uh, but I want to talk to you about Jesus being first, and everything, and everything that we do. I just gonna I'm gonna share a little bit about you know have you ever had the, the Lord just take you and just talk to you pretty straight bless you yes. talk to you just pretty straight yeah thank, thank you brother Ken <laughs> at least I know I'm not in it by myself and the Lord began to deal with me yesterday on some things and then uh, you know I began to just be uh, sorrowful because uh, there's a lot of things that I do that aren't in order. What do you mean by in order? I don't put Jesus first. How about you? I, I, I'm just going to be honest with you. You know me. I've been transparent for two years. I'm going to stop now. <laughs> you know? I, I'm not Mr. Perfect. I've told you a hundred times. They just let me preach here. And so I'm not Mr. Wonderful. And so I'm not. The one thing I am is honest. And I will, talk, I will tell you the truth. When the Lord begins to get to deal with me on some things, I will tell you the truth. And so here's what the Lord began to deal with me about not putting Him first. And not, not putting Him at number one. And, and they said, well, I'm supposed to spend most of my time here, God. Yeah, but that doesn't mean I put Him first. That's right. Somebody must say amen because it's true. There's a lot of times in our lives we put a lot of things first before we put God first. In Revelation 1 and 8, he says he's the Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning and the end. He's the first and the last. Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end, says the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. He's first in the beginning and in the ending. He is number one. And without him, I can't do anything. And without Him, I'm not able to do anything. Unless He exhales, I cannot inhale. Unless He allows me to, to be alive right now. He has, what does it say? The life is just a vapor, and then it is gone. Anybody over the age of 60, can I get an amen? Anybody over the age of 40, can I get an amen? Because it goes fast. And in three weeks, two and a half weeks, I'll be 45 years old. 45 years old. I remember, I'm still young as well. Thank you. My Lord bless Brother Ken, double portion right now. 
But if I but if I look back in 1987 when I was graduating high school and we were looking forward to the year 2000 and the age I was going to be at the year 2000, I believe it was 31 years old. To year 2000, I thought, man, that'll be I'll be old. I was 18 years old in high school, graduating, and and I remember thinking, man, in the year 2000, I'll, I'll be I'll be 31 years old. That time's gone by, had not it? <laughs> That time's gone by quick. And so we're just here for just a little short time. But can we not just let God be first in something? The church has got to let God be first. What do you mean, Brother Jeff? Quit taking this place for granted. If you don't get this everywhere. If you don't believe me, go try somewhere else. Yeah, I've never heard a pastor tell somebody to go try somewhere else. You have now. Because if you're not here for the right reasons, and God's not here, and you're not here to meet the Lord and touch God and, and, and worship God and, and, to be, and be part of something that's, that's more than just you, then maybe we're not here for the right reasons. I had a man tell me the other day, he said, you know, I, I do all this, I do all that. He said, maybe I'm just not, he doesn't go to church here, but he goes to church elsewhere. He said, maybe I'm just taking... My time, and I'm at the wrong church. And I said, "Well, I didn't tell him. I didn't proselyte him. I said, you know, you need to talk. You need to deal with that. You know, he doesn't. He doesn't go to church here. So I quit trying to figure out who it was. <laughs> you know, I do know more people than you. And so, <laughs> so quit trying to figure it out. But he said he was the Alpha and the Omega. He's the first, and he's the last. He's the beginning, and he's the end." He's not to be pushed to the side. He's not to be used only when we want something. There's so many times that, 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 that we go to God only when we want to do something or when it's time for us to perform. When it's time for us to show our godly wisdom or show our godly gifts or show our ability to play or sing or whatever your gifting is. I can only use what my giftings are. And, and to play and to sing. Or maybe it's our time to preach so we spend a little extra time in prayer that day. Or maybe it's our time to do something. But why cannot God be first all the time? Why is it that Jesus is always relegated to our secondary, our last-ditch effort instead of being a, a lifestyle of who He truly is, which is number one? And, and listen, and don't get upset with me yet because I... Really, this is to be an introduction, uh, so don't turn me off yet. But hear me, why can Jesus not be the first thing in our lives that we do? Why can we not wake up and worship Him and praise Him and give Him glory and read and study His Word a little bit and then go about our daily business? I don't understand it. And, and, may, and I'm just as guilty. I'm standing right here guilty. I'm, I'm guilty. I'm guilty of this. The alarm going off. Boom, snooze. Alarm going off. Boom, snooze. Alarm going off. Boom, snooze. And my wife going, are you going to get up? And then I get up and go, oh. and I go get in a truck and go sell tortillas. Never give God a thought until I'm driving down the road and it's 10 o'clock and I go, oh yeah, I didn't pray today. Nobody else is in the house. Yeah. That's all right. I'll just be, I'll be truthful. It doesn't matter to me. And I'll be truthful. And then never give Jesus another thought until we, until, until we need something or I, or I think of somebody I need to pray for. And then I pray for them. And I, I say, God, I, would you please touch Sister Latricia? Just use that as an example. Uh, Sister Latricia today, because could you, could, you too, could you please just heal her body and make her whole? We need her at church, God. Could you, could you just use her and, and could you just... Do something in her life. I've never one time said, God, how much I love you today, how much I appreciate you today, how much I love you, how much I worship you, how, how wonderful and glorious you are. I just call his number up and say, can you do this for me? Amen. Very true. I'm not picking on you. Please understand. I'm going to read you a little bit of this. Uh, this, is, this is just from the Lord speaking to me, and I write things down because if I don't write them down, I don't remember. So, I wrote it down. I'm not, I'm not reading you my stuff. <laughs> I'm not first in the church. Position is more important than power. 
False humility has replaced true service. We say, I don't want to, I don't have to be in this position, but if we're asked to step aside so someone else can move into God's position for them, anger rises, feelings are hurt, attitudes become downtrodden. I have to be, God says, Jesus, I have to be first. And this is, this is the part that I want you to get in your spirit. He has to be first. Amen. Not because his ego is so great that he must be worshipped. Not because I need you to make me feel like I'm God. I must be first because that is the only way that I can be with you. Amen. What do you mean by that, Brother Jeff? I'll get to it in just a second. I cannot, I cannot share my position as God with the other gods in your life. The gods that keep me from being first, your children, your stomach, your parents, your job, your spouse, your extended family, your church, your position at church, your desire or lust for other people's things, your sexual appetite and anything that, that sears, that you're conscious, anything that, that causes you to look on it instead of, of God, it is something that keeps you from me and me from you. I'm jealous for you. I will, not, I will not share you with anyone. I will not share my position as God with anyone in your life. I must be first in the morning for worship, for prayer, for study. Make me first, not for a week, not for a month, not for a year. But I must be first for a lifetime and a life change. See what I will do when I'm first. And that was to the church. Hear me. Hear me. He can only be with you if you worship Him first. The commandment was what? First commandment of the Ten Commandments is what? You'll have no other gods before Him. I'll have no other gods. Please understand me. I'll have no other gods. I, I can't just... I cannot just be a, a person that just says, you know what? It's okay. God will understand no, he doesn't understand. He has to be number one for us to worship him in spirit and in truth. He has to be number one for us to, inter to inter inter interact with him. He has to be the, the father of, of us. And we have to, to be our Lord and Savior or he can't interact with us. Because, brother, buddy, he can't go against his word. And his word says, I can't be with you as long as something else is between us. Amen. Does it say that or not? I can't be your God if all these other gods are interfering with me being your God. I didn't say you didn't love him. I didn't say you didn't care about what he thinks. I didn't say you're not trying hard. I didn't say you're not trying to do the best you can do. I didn't say any of that. I just said he has to be number one in our lives. I just said your church has to be number one. That never came out of my mouth. But your God has to be number one. Jesus has to be first. I didn't say that your position has to be number one. Because positions get to be an albatross around your neck and drag you under because you're trying to fake it until you make it instead of having a relationship with Him. Amen. Jesus has to be it. It's Jesus and Him alone. There is no Jesus plus. It's Jesus and Him alone. Quit identifying yourself as what your position is in the church. What I mean by that is this. My name is not pastor. That's, what I sh that's my title. And that's what I should be called. But that's not who I am. That's, I, that's what I do. But I am, first of all, a Christian. Amen. And I'm, a, first of all, supposed to be, I'm supposed to be his servant. His son. Amen. Not just a servant, but a son. I'm supposed to have a relationship with him before I ever have a relationship with you. I'm supposed to have him as my savior before I ever do anything else. The pastor is what he's blessed me to do. And I'm so thankful to be the pastor of this church. Please understand me. I don't discredit that at all. I, I love my job. and I love what God has given me to do. But I didn't start out being the pastor of this church. You know what I started out being? A little punk in Sunday school class. The truth. That's what I started out being. I didn't start out, oh, I'm going to be the pastor of this church. I never, that was never my aspiration. 
I was just trying to get through. I was just trying to hang on until the Lord comes and maybe I can make it. I never, my aspiration was never to pastor. My, my aspiration was never to preach. That was never my aspiration. My aspiration was to be a drummer in a, in a, in a group and, and to sing and go travel. I, I have that traveling bone like my mother. I like to travel. I like to go places. I like to see stuff I've never seen. I, li I like uh, going, and, and but I like being home too. It's not that. But I like to go see stuff. But I want to come home. I want to come home. But, when I, but I, wanna, I like to go see stuff. And I thought, man, the best way you can go do that, you can go play music in the evening. But all day long, you have you, all day to go look at stuff. And go see stuff I've never seen before. Go places I've never been before. Amen. There's a great big world out there. There's more than Silver Oklahoma. I don't know if you guys knew that or not. Amen. There's more than Highway 9 and I-40. Okay, I didn't know if anybody knew that. And so you can go, you know, there's a lot of different places to be and a lot of different places to go. There's a lot of different people to meet. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to go do those kind of things, but that's not what God's plan was for me to do. And then I don't begrudge that at all. I don't miss playing. I don't miss it. I, I just I just love what I do, but he's got to be first. Does anybody understand what I'm trying to get across this morning? He's got to be the very first thing I think of when I wake up. I hate to use the word thing, but you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. He calls me a creature. So, you know, anyway, here, here's, the th here's the deal. I, he's got to be the very first person or very first thought that pops in my head has got to be, I've got to get up early and worship Him because He said, seek me early and I'll be found of you. Yes, That's what He says. Yes, I can't, you can't, listen, you can't expect me to find every scripture for you. Some of you are going to have to find yourself. Amen. Thank you. I don't write everything down. This is my notes. There's four lines here. That's what you get. So I said, hear me, hear me. I've heard people, say, people have said before, hey, can I get the out of that? There you go. There you go. That's what you get. You get four scriptures that don't mean nothing to anybody but me. Yeah. Amen? Amen? I have a, I have a, this is one of my, this is one of my notes, ready? God is hashtag one. God is number one. That's my notes. I didn't forget that. Okay? I, God, God is number one. He has to be number one. Without, it, without anything coming between us, He has to be number one. And then this church, listen to, this, listen to me just a minute. Our church has got to get hold of this. If you weren't here Wednesday night, and I understand if you weren't here Wednesday night, it's fine. But hear me, Wednesday night. We talked about in 1 Corinthians. We talked about how we had to have one common goal. Right? Anybody's here wins? Okay. You have to have a common goal. You have to have that common goal. Our common goal is to go, go win the loss. How do we do that? We go tell them about Jesus. Amen. That's how it is. That's how it happens. What's our common goal? I don't care. Every ministry in this church, it ought to be focused in to go tell somebody about Jesus. Amen. It's not about just feeding people. It's about telling them about Jesus. It's not about just having Sunday school. It's about telling them about Jesus. It's not about just uh, going to pick them up on a van. It's about telling them about Jesus. It's about everything that has got to go focused toward Jesus. It has got to be focused toward Him or we've lost our way. Amen. Well, glory, I'm going to preach in here. i got 12 more minutes and I'm going to get after it. So hear me. we got to understand something. I'm not going to read you everything that God told me, but I'm going to tell you everything that He told the church. And the church is this. Is He's not number one here. I try. I didn't mean that how, how, how it came out. He's not number one all the time. A lot of times he is. But he has to be number one all the time. Everything has to revolve around Jesus. If you read that book, that book is called the Bible. If you read that Bible, everything from the, in the beginning to the last where it says, Amen. It is all around Jesus. The prophecies about Jesus, is about, about His resurrection, about Him coming onto this planet, about His birth here, about His death here, about His resurrection here. There, everything leads up to Him. It's history about His family. It's history about what God can do. I understand that. But it's also, it revolves around... Uh, uh, Genesis 3, 15 or 16, it talks about that he will, he will crush the devil's head. The devil will bruise his heel. That's the first prophecy of Jesus in Revelation. I'm not, sorry, Genesis chapter 3. Amen. Come on with me, somebody. And listen, in uh, Genesis 1 through 1, uh, let's read, uh, I'm not going to read all of it, but Genesis 1 through 31. 1, 1 through 31. I just want you to turn over there. Turn over there. Now, you're not going to be able to notice this on the screen, but I just want you to turn over there if you have your Bible. 
1 through 31. Just get there. If you can't find Genesis, look at your neighbors. All right. If you can't answer up. If you can't find Genesis, you're in Sag. All right, ready? Verse 1, in the beginning, God. Verse 3, and God. Verse 4, and God. Verse 5, and God. Verse 6, and God. Verse 7, and God. Verse 8, and God. Verse 9, and God. Verse 10, and God. Verse 11, and God. Verse 12, it says about the earth. Verse 13, that it says about the evening. Verse 14, and God. Verse, 15, verse uh, 16, and God. Verse 17, and God. And verse, uh, verse 21, and God. Verse 20, and God. Verse 22, and God. Did you get a pattern there? Yeah. <laughs> Who's number one? God. Who's my Savior? God. Jesus is my Savior. God is my, God is my Father. Jesus is my Savior. Yes, amen. It has to be about Him. Yes. We've got to get this in our head, somebody. Somebody help me this evening, this morning. We've got to get this in our head that we've got to determine that God has got to be number one in our lives. Yes, and if He's not, then we've got to find a place in an altar until He is. Yes, amen. But I don't want to have to get up early. I ain't even gonna go I'm gonna be good. I'm gonna get back up here. And God. And God. Thirteen times in the first seventeen verses. And God. And God. That's just when I quit counting. And God. And God. All through that. All through that chapter. And God said. And God did. And God was. And God did. And God thus. And God so. And we just kind of hang out and say, well, I'm just going to go to church. You can't get everything you need by coming to church. I'm glad you're here. Thank God. Man, I'm glad you're here. Look, but we love you. Glad you're here. Love you guys, man. But you can't get everything you need on Sunday morning. Coming to church. I look at churches around the world and I'm not dogging anybody about anything. But our schedules are so packed with stuff. Today, uh, my kids have two birthday parties today. Yesterday, I had two birthday parties. Uh, I had to go do something yesterday. What did I do yesterday? Something. Had to be somewhere yesterday. The Friday before, we had to go to to our district office. The Thursday before that, we had something going on. The Wednesday, we had church. Uh, the Tuesday before that, we had something. Our schedules are so <clears throat> packed with stuff oh, that's good. Yeah. that we don't even have time to go to church. Yeah. Right. 45 minutes on a Sunday. Yeah. 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 I'm just saying. I'm, listen, I, don't look at me like I'm beating you to death. I'm standing right here telling you what my schedule was. Yeah. Hear me? I just say, you sorry people had birthday parties and you sorry people had stuff. That's not what I said. No. Me. I'm talking about me. This was my schedule. Right. I need to lighten my schedule. Amen. Amen. And people come, they, they, well, they want to know now what time church starts and what time it's over. Yeah. Well, it starts at 10. What time it's over, I don't know. That's the truth. That people want to know what time it starts, what time it's over, when do I need to pick up my kids, and, uh, and all that stuff. Yeah. That's what people want to know. Yeah. And, but it's, it's not about that. Yeah. If he's first, then it doesn't matter what time it's over. Yeah. It's over when it's over. Yeah. You know, where's, where's the time to spend at an altar? Where's the time to go, listen, we're going to wear this, I, I promise you. God, I'm trying to get it. I want to preach this to you today, but I can't. It's for the vision for next year. We've got to get him first. For if I don't get him first, these altars are never going to fill up. They're never going to be a, a place to come weep at an altar and, and get somebody's life right with God. Listen, I don't have the ability to change your life. I have the ability to bring you to Jesus. I don't have the ability to change everything about you. I just have the ability to bring you to him. That's all I've got. Church, listen to me. Officials, listen. Church leadership, listen to me. For five minutes, listen to me. Quit playing with babies and quit playing with your phone and listen to me. For five minutes. Leadership. We've got to point him, we've got to point 
Everybody we can to Jesus. And this church has got to turn its, its actions from, well, this is what I do. Who are you to be involved in what I do? Come on, good. Well, this is what I do. Don't you try to cross over and be in my area. Two, this is what we do. Yeah. 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 I'm going to be pastor today. I, you know, that's all right. You guys get mad last time. This is what we do. We do this to, in order to get people to get through the kingdom of God. Listen, it's ridiculous to me. Well, they're not, what are they doing? Really? Who let you do it the first time? Well, I just had to do it. Well, maybe they're just trying to help. Maybe God's just trying to bring people to help you that you can train people how to do it so you can get out of that and God can put them in a position they need to be in instead of you always staying there. I started as a little punk in Sunday school class, but that's not where I ended up. I can still be a little punk in Sunday school class if I want to be. That's the truth. I could have, I could have never grown. I could have stayed right where I was at. I could have been exactly the same as I at 44 as I was when I was 14. I said, now you can look. look. Right. <laughs> Telling you. Yes, I I could have never grown in the Lord. I could have never, I, I could have never aspired to have anything greater than what I had when I was 14 years old. I could have never aspired to have a, a better walk with the Lord than I did when I was 14. Now listen, I was saved from the Holy Ghost when I was 14. I could have stayed right there. But listen, I, I aspired for greater than that. There was more out there for me than that. There was more out there for you than that. There's more, there's, listen, there's more for you to have than just that little bit of a Holy Ghost, of, 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 what's that? Holy Ghost, I guess, experience that you had when you were 14 or when you were 40 or when you were 20. There's more for you than that. And so you should aspire for greater than that. Yes, amen. 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 Greater shall we have than this. Amen. Jesus said these things I do with greater shall you do than me. Amen. I want to sing. You can't even come to church. <laughs> I want to teach. Never mind. That's good for you. Come on. Come on. I can't tell Sister Paula, but thank you. All right, here we go. Hear me. Boy, y'all mad now. <laughs> I'm just telling the truth. I'm just trying my hardest to be with all the love I know how. <laughs> I feel like getting free for talking in the back. All the love I know how. <laughs> how many times did I hear that? I heard that in the office. Now, Brother Jim, I'm going to tell you this is all the love I know how. Oh, Lord, here we go. Because <laughs> I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. But you know what? My pastor loved me. And he helped me. And he's a great guy. And I love him. And, a, and he taught me a lot of stuff. Well, he did. I don't say he was a perfect man. He wasn't a perfect man. But you know, I can, I can learn from the things that he didn't do right as well as the things he did do right. right. He, never, he never claimed to be a little angel with a halo and float around here. He did the very best he knew how. I love him and I appreciate him. And I thank God for him because he taught me a lot of stuff. John 1 and 1. Everybody should know that. That I never look. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. Not me. Not, listen, that's not the last thing I look for. Well, I don't, I've tried everything else. Let me open up that Bible. See if I can. No. In the beginning, when it's coming, when things are coming at me, I've got to open up the Word of God and find an answer. That's how the Lord began to deal with me yesterday. Is because I said, God, I've got to have an answer. I've got to have an answer. I've got to have some things in my life change. I've got to shake some things up. I'm, I'm tired of being tired. How about you? Yes, Amen. 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 Amen.
it's funny for you, you're not tired, I'm tired sometimes. Let me go sit in my chair right now. <laughs> Cover up, go to sleep. <laughs> it's cold by that window. And it's open. <laughs> but hear me. Hear me. I don't, want you to, I don't want you to think I'm angry at anybody because I'm not. I want you to understand where I'm coming from. Where I'm coming from is simply, as God's point of view, is that he's got to be number one in our lives. And I promise you guys, listen, I, don't, I know I'm not fool enough to believe that everybody in here is going to hear what I have to say. I've pastored and preached long enough to understand that. But one thing I do know is there's somebody that's going to hear what I have to say. Right. And there's somebody that's going to say, you know what? That guy's right. I've, I've allowed God to be second in my life, or third in my life, or fourth in my life, or fifth in my life. Listen to me, guys, listen to me. That, that lawn will go for another day. The leaves will be all right for another hour. The, the, the car, it'll be okay. You're just You know, you can change it over here in a minute. Go give God some time. I promise you that if you'll give God time, God will reveal himself to you and who he is and what he is. And listen, until we get that into our life, we're stuck. Listen, do you guys ever realize, do you guys ever, th ever think about this? It may never cross your mind because you're not pastoring. It never cross your mind. But does it ever cross your mind that why does this church always rise to about 120 and then fall back down to about 90? Rise to 120 and fall back down to 90. Does anybody ever think about that? Yes, I yes. I'll tell you why. It's because we get to a certain point and we get comfortable and then we don't, you know, we, when we, whenever we need things, we, we begin to pray for, the, for God to move in them. But then we get comfortable and everything, the bills are getting paid, everybody's, getting, everybody's fat and happy, everything's good. And we quit praying and putting God first. And then all of a sudden, people begin to fall away. And, it's, and the reason is because God's not, when God's not first, nothing works right. Is that any good? Yeah. Nothing works right without God being first. Does that mean you have to be perfect? You're never going to be perfect. But reach for it. Strive for it. What does the scripture say? Does, this, does the scripture say when you sin or does it say if you sin? It says if. If you sin, come back to the Lord. If you sin. That's, we need to exchange the ifs and the, we got we got to mess up. We, we can just expect to sin. When? Well, the Bible says when I sin. No, it doesn't. It says if you sin, you go to the Lord. Go to the Lord. If I had it, I have it in my mind. I'm going through the Rolodex in my mind. This minute, I'll find it. If you sin, not when you sin, but even see back in the day we used to preach that hard. This this back Pentecostals used to preach that hard back in the day. Now it's just like we just expect it. It's going to happen. Well, now it is now because my attitude is well, it's going to happen. But it should be, I'm not going to sin. I'm going to do my very best. I'm not going to sin today. Instead of saying, ah, oh, I sinned. Well, big deal. Big deal? That's what Jesus died for us because if we sin, I'll tell you, we're at 1 Corinthians chapter, 1 Corinthians chapter, I believe it's 5 or 6. Let's go to 5. And go to 30. First Corinthians chapter 5, verse 30. I'll find it real fast. I guess it's close in there. Somebody, somebody tell me. It was three. We did three of this on uh, prayer, uh, Bible study. I'm sorry I didn't have that. Let's go, uh, let's go, I'm sorry, let's go six in verse. Uh, Verse 9. Know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor adulterers, adulterers, or effeminate, nor abusers of themselves, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners, shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. Now, I'm trying to hurry because I didn't mean to go here, but I did. Uh, let's go back to where was that? Such were some of you. Okay. Such were, such were, they were. I was yeah. this. Yeah. Such were some of you, but you're washed. Paul's telling the church of Corinth, 
You used to be all this stuff, but now you're not that anymore. Quit identifying yourself as that sinful person that you used to be. Amen. Okay. That's good preaching. I'm very much this. Okay. Quit identifying. Well, I'm just. I was just a thief. I'm a, I'm a thief. No. You used to be. Well, I was an adult. I'm an adulterer. No, you're not. You used to be, but if you're washed in the blood of the Lord, you're not that anymore. Quit identifying yourself as such. You don't have to be that. You have to listen. I'm washed, but you are sanctified, but you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. You're not only washed. Listen, you're washed. You're sanctified. You're justified in the name of the Lord. You're sanctified. Set aside for God's use. You're justified. Just if you'd never sinned. Yes, amen. You're washed. Quit identifying yourself as somebody who's not washed. Not, not somebody. You're identifying yourself as who you used to be. That's not who I am anymore. So you can't say when I sin, it's if I sin, I go to the Lord. It's not when I do, it's if I do. Does anybody understand what I'm telling you? As long as he's first. Therefore, glorify God in your body, in your spirit, which are God's. Hear me? Anybody hot? I'm about to die. Hear me. Understand this. Go back to verse 19, please. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you? which ye have of God, and you are not your own. Yeah. I'll do what I want to do. All right, devil spirit, go ahead. Yeah. <clears throat> the spirit of Lucifer was, I'll exalt myself. I'll have a kingdom greater than his. I'll do this, and I'll do that. Verse yeah. 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 20. <clears throat> I'm bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit. Which are God's. Glorify Him in everything you do. Glorify Him. Hang on to Him. I'll quit right there. Hang on to Him. Let Him be first in your life. Church, if He's not first here, then what are we doing? He's got to be first. I don't have to be first. I don't like eating first. I'm uncomfortable when we have lunch dinners and I say, you guys got to go first. I would rather you go first and I'll get what's left. That's not false humility. That's just the way I was raised and that's what I know. To serve others. To let them eat. I'll be fine. I, don't, I, I could probably skip a couple of minutes. It'll be all right. Okay? I don't have to be first. But he has to be first. He has to be first. He must be first. Not only in your life, but in this church. Amen. Everything has to be pointing toward him. Everything. It's got to, or it doesn't work. You ever notice that you beat your head against the wall? Well, maybe Jesus isn't first. But Jesus first and see what happens. 